guys, Samsung's One UI 6 is finally out and there are a bunch of brand new features you can do with your Samsung. So let me show you everything new, starting with this brand new drop down panel. So of course, the first thing to do is make sure you've actually updated your phone to the latest One UI 6, because now the first big change you'll probably notice is that the quick settings panel got a sweet new update and just looks so much better. The brightness slider now also always shows up right under your main icons. And if you swipe down again, you'll find the rest of your quick setting icons in this big block over here. Then the top block is specifically made for your connection settings like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And the bottom block is where you'll find a few quick display settings like like dark mode. But what is really cool is if you tap on this little pencil icon over here, you can choose exactly which icons you'd like to edit, like your top main ones, where you can have up to six different icons, or you can choose to edit the center block of icons, where you can pretty much have as many as you'd like. But you'll now also find this new quick setting instant access option. And if you turn this on, basically when you swipe down on the top right hand corner of your screen, you can instantly open up the full quick settings panel. Simple and easy. But my favorite update has got to be this brand new music bar. Because not only does it display the album artwork, but it also has this really cool animation on the music bar when you're busy playing music. And it's just such a nice touch. Now onto some lock screen customization upgrades, starting with the clock. As you might know, you can resize the clock, but you can now finally move it around to anywhere on the top half of your screen. And as you move it around, you'll also see the notification icons move left or right with it. But I mean, why this feature is so nice is you can just perfectly position your clock with your wallpaper. Uh, satisfying. <laughs> You'll now also find the three brand new clock fonts when you swipe left, which look so damn good, and also work on every single one of the digital clock styles. As mentioned, there are three different fonts in total, and as you can see, they're each completely different in design and style. I love that Samsung added these, but a few more on the next update would be great. Within the clock section, you'll also find this brand new analog style. So if analog is your thing, then you can just customize that a bit, give it a different color and all that good stuff. And even though these new features seem kind of small, they actually make a really big difference to your overall lock screen look and design. I'll also be releasing a new video on some of Samsung's best customization soon. So make sure you stick around for that. But in the meantime, let me show you what's new with the home screen. So onto the home screen and what got some really cool updates are actually the home screen widgets. Because now when you head into widgets and open up weather widgets, for example, you'll see this new one called dynamic weather. And what I love about this widget is that it actually animates on your home screen to let you know exactly what the weather is like outside. It'll animate to let you know if it's raining, snowy, sunny, or even nighttime. And it just looks so cool. Plus a really quick way to tell what the actual weather is like. On top of that, if you tap on the weather widget and scroll down, you'll see it actually also got an upgrade with a lot more stats and this really cool sunrise and sunset graphic as well as the moon phases. But by far the best new widget has got to be this brand new camera widget. And why it is so awesome is because of all these extra settings like the starting mode where you can choose the front video camera for example and once you press the save button, now whenever you press the widget on your home screen, it'll instantly open up those camera settings that you set. You can also select to change exactly where your photos or videos get saved, like in a custom album, for example. And you can then go and change the background image of your widgets to easily indicate the mode, which is just too cool. What I totally suggest you guys do is create a dedicated screen with all your different camera widgets and their specific modes, just so you can quick and easily access them. And while we're talking about the camera, it also got some slick new updates as well. So straight off the bat, the first thing you have to know about within the camera is that now if you head into the settings, then into advanced intelligence options, in here you'll notice these new options called maximum, medium, and minimum. And so you know how when you take a photo on Samsung phones, it always seems to wait a second or two before you can take another one? Well, if you change this advanced intelligent mode from maximum to minimum, then check this out, you'll be able to snap photos like a million times faster. And basically how this works is by changing from maximum to minimum, you're telling your phone not to process the picture as soon as you take it, which actually speeds up the camera shutter a lot. 
Then, as for the actual camera, you'll now also see that you can finally change your camera's megapixels right over here, which is so much easier, and a few other things like motion photos and even filters. Then something else that also got a little upgrade is the watermark feature. So once you turn this on, you can then choose to add the time, which can actually come in really handy, especially if you need to keep track of important photos. And what's really nice, if you ever wanted to, you could also remove the watermark just by selecting revert to original and voila. But what has probably got to be my favorite new camera feature is the scan documents and text option, where you can now turn on auto scan and remove any unwanted objects. So now, Whenever you need to quickly scan a document, your phone will automatically snap a pic of it. But what really blew my mind is after you press save, it'll automatically remove any fingers out the pic and clean it up, which is just mind blowing. Okay, so after you've taken your photos inside your gallery, if you now press on this info icon, you'll notice that you can remaster, add portrait effect, and even object erase straight over here. The remaster feature also seemed to get a bit of an upgrade because it did such a good job at cleaning up this image, like bringing out all the details from the shadow and also making my skin tone look a lot warmer. And the same also goes for portrait effect where now it doesn't seem to struggle as much with the hair, but I'll have to do some more testing on that and show you guys in a video coming out super soon. But if you do decide to edit your photo, like adding a filter for example, or editing some of the shadows and highlights, what's really awesome is that now once you save your image, if you tap on these three little dots, you can now finally copy these edits. And if you then select a few other photos, you can paste that exact same edit onto all of them. Wow. And if you want to share those photos, you can then tap and hold to select a couple, then keep holding down to stack them up like this, and then use your other finger to open up an app like WhatsApp and quickly drop them into a chat and send. Just so convenient. And believe it or not, this also works with pictures or GIFs from Samsung's internet app, where you can just drag that image or GIF into WhatsApp and press send without having to save it first. Nice. And if that wasn't enough, the subject crop tool also got an upgrade by saving your cropped image Images as stickers, which you'll easily find on the Samsung keyboard under the emoji then sticker icon. Then just tap on it to send to a friend or what's also really nice is if you're creating a post on Instagram stories, you can use the sticker to overlay on your original image to come up with something creative. It doesn't exactly work like a proper sticker in WhatsApp just yet, so if anyone from Samsung or Meta are listening, then you know what you need to do. Now, believe it or not, but one of the most mind-blowing One UI 6 features has got to do with the Bixby. You do have to first turn this feature on with inside the phone application under settings called Bixby Text Call, which as some of you may know is not actually new because you can just answer the phone straight away with Bixby Text to Call and she'll do her thing. I'm using Bixby Text Call. To but what is new is that now midway through a conversation, you can actually switch to Bixby and only then get it to start talking for you. Then whatever the other person is saying will pop up on your screen and whatever you type out, Bixby will read out to them. No thanks, I already have one. So if you really wanted to, you could just get Bixby to answer and speak on all your calls for you, which is pretty crazy. And if you do end up using Bixby during a call, the other cool thing you can do is if you tap on that recent call, then the info icon, you'll see this little transcribe button that'll show you the entire transcript of that call you just had. Nice. Seems like Bixby really is stepping it up lately, so Great job, Samsung. Now to show you guys two brand new apps with One UI 6, starting with this first one, which you can download inside the Galaxy Store called Galaxy Enhance X. Once you open up and start the app, it'll prompt you to select an image. And basically this app is made to edit all your photos, but by using special tools like turning your photos into HDR, unblurring anything that's blurry, and a few other extra features like upscaling your photos using AI to four times bigger than the original. All in all, it's pretty Pretty nice that Samsung has made a completely separate app just for photo editing and it's completely free. And for the second app, you'll actually find it already pre-installed with One UI 6 called Studio. And just like the Enhance X app, the Studio app is made to specifically help you edit video clips. Like give them a little color grade, cut them up and add music tracks, 
add stickers from your keyboard or add text you can adjust and again what's totally nuts is this app is completely free One, two, three, yeah. Now onto some quick new customization features, starting with a new feature found inside accessibility, then under vision enhancements, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll see cursor thickness. And basically what this will do is just change how thick your keyboard's cursor is. So whether you want it to be a thick boy or super skinny, you decide. One UI 6 also gave the modes and routine settings a bit of an update, and honestly, it's just so much nicer to use now. So if you have any modes like gym mode, or a night mode, maybe even a work mode. What's new is that now, whenever you wanna customize that mode specific lock screen, you can do it directly from the lock screen instead of having to go all the way back into your mode settings. And it'll keep those custom settings for each separate lock screen. You can also quickly switch between modes just by using the modes icon directly on your lock screen, which as you can see is so convenient. So there's a few hidden One UI 6 features scattered all around that are pretty hard to find. And specifically this feature found inside your quick settings panel, where now if you turn on aeroplane mode and then turn on your Wi-Fi, then turn off aeroplane mode and back on again, you'll notice that it'll actually remember whether you had the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth turned on or not last time. Interesting. Then if you tap and hold onto your hotspot icon, you'll find another brand new hidden feature called one-time password. And if you turn this on, you can then share this password with whoever needs to use your phone's hotspot. But after you turn it off and back on again, you'll notice that the password has actually changed so that the same person can't connect again. And that's really useful because no one likes getting their data used up out of nowhere. And to find the next hidden feature, you'll have to head into your about phone under software info and in here, tap on the Android version a few times so that this icon opens up. And if you tap and hold down on it for a little while, this space game starts up where you can then fly around and need to find a bunch of different stars and planets. It's actually quite tough, but still a nice little Easter egg to the actual Apollo 14 mission. If you guys were wondering what phones the One UI 6 is coming to, then make sure you check out the description down below and make sure you stick around for that brand new Samsung customization video coming out super soon. But I will see you guys in the next one. Toodles! Yeah.